Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag. And today we are doing such a cute bag. When this pattern came out, I thought, I think I'm actually gonna make Easter baskets for my kids this year. And this pattern is perfect, it's so cute. It's on the big side. Obviously they're gonna use it for other things than just Easter, but um, it's also used as a crossbody. You can use it as a knitting bag. You can use it as a snack bag, like so many different uses for it. It is the Keljan bag by Country Cow Designs. How adorable is that? Oh my, I love it so much. Look at those round bottoms. I like a round bottom. Um, okay, let's go over this bag. It is so fun to sew. It really is not a hard one. It isn't time consuming. I would say from beginning to end, it took me sewing and filming. It took me two hours. Um, so really, it's not a time consuming bag. There aren't a lot of difficult pieces to it. If you don't want to do piping, leave out the piping. Um, but the piping adds such a cute little accent to it. I have, mine's like reflective piping. I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but right here. Now, I used bigger crazy piping on this one. You can see it on that one. <laughs> I made my own. It's really thick and big, but I still think it turned out pretty stinking cute. I think there's a lot of variations you can do for this as well. You don't have to do a pocket front and back. You can leave that out. You don't have to do a zipper pocket on the inside. You can leave that out or you could add a slip pocket. I love it. So I did not do the crossbody straps, but normally on the pattern, uh, you can put crossbody straps on the sides here if you would like. She has a video that she has done where she shows you how to do the crossbody straps and her method for sewing on the circle she does a little bit different than I did. She base it all in place first with a needle and thread. Um, I didn't do that, but I think if you struggle with circle bases, that is a great way to get everything to stay so you can sew it in place. So definitely try that. I'll link her video below in the description if you um, want to watch that. So this bag includes front and back zipper pockets. Now I've already said the round base. It has an inside zipper pocket there. And guys, I love this so much. <laughs> I love it so much. I wanna make like 10 more right now. Um, the one different thing about this bag is all the heavy interfacing is on the inside, on your lining. It's not on the exterior. And you can use multiple fabrics, domestic machine friendly, not a lot of thick seams at all. All the interfacing is kept out of your seams, which helps a lot. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Go get this pattern and try it out. I absolutely am in love with it. Again, the Kelshawn bag by Country Cow Designs. And let's start making this cute little bag. Enjoy. Side note, I want to add, I didn't talk about my fabrics. This cute Disney fabric and this cute Mario fabric is from Eden L Fabrics. I will link it below in the description. This reflective pretty vinyl is from Bodio and my inside fabrics, super cute, are from Hawthorne Threads. And I think that's it. I used woven, interfacing, Decaville light, Decaville heavy, and that's it. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go over the pieces for the Keljon bag. So the one difference with this bag is your interfacing, like your heavy stabilizer interfacing pieces are on your lining, not on your exterior. So pay attention to that. I'm using Decaville Light. I used that on my first bag and I liked how it turned out. She has a great video out um, with the example of using fleece, Decaville, and foam. They all make great bags. So it's just up to you which you wanna do. So I have my two Decaville light pieces all cut out. One of them has my zipper area 
um, cut out of it and I'll adhere those later on in the video when I do the lining. So you should have two of those. I've already done um, my bottom piece with my stabilizer. I used a heavy Decaville on it and I did woven interfacing on all of my cotton pieces. So all of my cotton pieces have woven interfacing. Um, and then your heavy, you could use um, Peltex. Um, some kind of heavy interfacing on your bottom is out of your seam allowance. Okay, so that's my bottom piece of my lining. I have my two um, inside lining pieces. Okay, two of those. I have my pocket pieces. I'm using a um, cotton canvas, so I didn't interface those for the pocket pieces because you don't really need to if it's a canvas. You can, it's up to you. I just chose not to this time around. So I have my my facing and my two pieces here. Um, and then you have these two top lining pieces. Okay, don't forget those. Those are lining, but it looks good if it matches your exterior of your bag. Okay, so I have two of those. And then I'm doing handles. I have one handle already done. I have the other handle here and I'll do that on camera. So you should have two of those. I am not doing a cross body strap because again, this is for Easter baskets and I don't feel like um, it needs a cross body strap. But if you want to do that, go for it. Again, her video, she um, sews a cross body on her back. So go check that out if you wanted to do the cross body strap. It's pretty straightforward if you've done uh, those before. My outside pieces, I have already cut two of my front panels. These are gonna be my um, zipper pockets on the front. So you should have four total, two big pieces that you cut and the measurements are on the pattern. I have four pocket pieces for my exterior. And then I have my other two exterior pieces. I am putting a small piping like she has in the pattern on these pieces. I will uh, show you quickly how I put those on and I will have to switch to a zipper foot for the piping. Um, so I really suggest if you're doing piping on the bag, you really need a zipper foot. So make sure that you have that. And then I have my bottom piece. And again, no stabilizer on the outside bottom piece because it's on the lining. And then three zippers, two for my exterior pockets, one for my interior. I'm using a number five on the inside. You can use a number three like she suggests in the pattern. It's up to you, both work fine. And I think that's all the pieces that we need for this. All right, so we will start sewing this bag up. All right, let's start with our handles real quick. We're just making simple um, fabric handles. I did put a woven interfacing on it. So it's up to you what you want to do for it. I drew a line down the middle. I'm going to fold my raw edges in and then fold again. And so you don't have to worry about your raw ends here because they will be sewn into the bag so you don't have to worry about finishing those off okay just like that fold it again just like that and then we will sew that together So those are our handles for the top. I thought when I first made my first one, I thought, oh, those seem super short, but actually 
They're kind of perfect. I did make them an inch longer than she has in the pattern. That's the only thing I changed on that. But they are kind of the perfect size for this bag. So I don't think those need to be messed with. So I'm gonna get my pocket pieces out here. So these are my linings. And these were my front panels. It was all one piece like that. And I cut it where she says to in the pattern. All right, and I have directional print, so I need to make sure that I'm doing this the correct way. So first you wanna grab your top piece here. And I want my pull to go from left to right. So I've got it that way and I am going to baste it onto this top piece because when it comes down, it's gonna come down like that, okay? So I'm gonna baste that onto my top piece first at an eighth inch. Okay, just like that. And then, so you make sure that's going the right way with your directional print. You wanna take one of your pocket pieces and you're gonna do a sandwich just like that. And you're gonna sew that on at 1 fourth inch seam allowance. Okay. And Marley May can't make up her mind whether she wants in here or out of here. Marley, you're gonna have to wait a second. <laughs> All right. So that's what I did there. So now I want to press that towards the top and I am going to top stitch along here with my pocket piece going down, okay? So it's not back against this top piece. All right, so just like that, that's what we have right now. So now you wanna add your bottom piece here. So I want to flip it up to make sure that I've got it going the right way. Okay, because when it comes down, it's going to come down like that. All right, so zipper right side down on that bottom piece. And we're going to baste that on the other end of your zipper. All right, I'm just basting that down again just like we did on the top. Okay, so when you open it up, that's what you have. Now we want to put our lining on the other side of this zipper, okay? So it should be right sides together with your other lining that you already put on and you're sticking this on the other side of this zipper. Same one that you just sewed the other piece to. I'm making a sandwich here. And then you're gonna sew that on at a fourth inch seam allowance. zipper out of the way. All right. And then you want to flip those both down just like that. And we are going to top stitch along this bottom one. So make sure that your other lining up here is flipped up out of the way. You don't want it down because that will, that will close up your zipper and you don't want that.
All right. So it should be top stitch, both top and bottom now. Um, if you want, you can close up the sides just to make sure you don't pull that. You could have done that before, just to make sure you don't pull that um, zipper pull off of your tape. I just broke my thread. Hold, please. Okay, oops, come here. So now we wanna flip, oh, let me close up the other side, just a minute. Let me close this side up too. Now we want to flip this piece down and we are going to trim well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew this close first and then I'm going to trim it down. So that's where we want it. So one piece will be longer than the other piece. That is how it's supposed to be. I'm going to sew that shut at a fourth inch seam allowance there. And I'm going to trim that off. And that, and if you want to, you can, I think I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and baste my sides shut just right here to keep um, my panel just all together as one. I don't, she doesn't suggest that in the pattern, but I'm just going to do that real quick. because you don't need to have those pieces separate anymore. All right, so that is your one of your zipper panels for your front. Front, back, here's my zipper. I am gonna go ahead and repeat on the other panel the same exact thing that we just did, and then we'll move on. Okay, so next we're gonna work on the piping. Now you don't have to add this to your bag. This is optional, but it really does add a cute little pop of something. I'm using this like reflective <laughs> piping. It's really cool when there's a flash. I figured it matched my um, vinyl that I'm using. So it's pretty thin. This one's really super thin. Um, it has just enough, you should have 3 eighths of an inch to the edge of the piping and that's what you want. You wanna be able to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the side. I had to change to a zipper foot. You have to have a zipper foot to do this. Um, and I went an inch down and started it and you fold it at that 90 degree angle just like you do um, when you're doing zipper, uh, recessed zippers with your tape. Same exact idea, okay, it's just, turned at that 90 degree angle. I start down at an inch and I stop at an inch. 
I basted this on first at a fourth inch, well actually at an eighth inch seam allowance here. And then I'm going to put it together at that three eighths inch, which will be right up against this piping. So I'm just attaching my piping right now. I've already done it to this piece. I'm gonna do it to this piece. I'll show you how. So this was just pinched here and folded down right there, okay? And then I clipped it, just like that. I'm gonna very carefully just baste that down. I'm gonna do about an eighth inch with my zipper foot here. Just like that. And I will trim these like extra, these extra tails down. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat for the other side. just like that. Now, I will tell you, I did use thicker piping for this one. It's like, it was jute cord that I had, and it was bias binding, pre-made bias binding that I used for that. And do you see how much bigger it is? It's really thick and big, but I think it makes kind of a cute pop on this bag. I really like how it turned out. So you can use a bigger piping. You just need to remember that no matter what, you need to have these joined at a 3 8 inch seam allowance to make sure that this whole exterior piece is the correct size to attach to your circular bottom. So whatever size of piping you use, just make sure you alter it that you're using a 3 8 inch seam allowance to put it all together. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I am going to attach these to my exterior pieces now. I'm just trimming these down. I don't need this extra. Okay. All right. So now we're just making a big circle with all of our pieces and alternating or alternating, not alternating, alternating uh, our pieces. So I'm going to attach this to here and I'm going to sew it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which I can only do with this piping if I have a zipper foot on. So remember that. And it'll be right up against that piping. So mine is like right 
right there. Do you see how little it is? This is such small piping, but it worked. Right along there. And then you want to um, top stitch along this side of it. You wanna fold it like that and top stitch it. I'm gonna do that after I put all four pieces attached before I attach the last piece. I'm going to top stitch all of these because I don't really wanna use my zipper foot to top stitch all of this, although I guess I could. Let me try it, I'm not sure. It might be fine. Yeah, you could use your zipper foot to top stitch. It's up to you. You can do it now or you can wait. That's what it looks like. Ooh, cute. All right, and then we're just going to go around and repeat for all of these pieces. And then we'll go to the next step.
Okay, so this might be a little tricky because now you have a whole circle and you need to sew through this. So you are going to have to pull and manipulate a little bit to get through it. So you do it whichever way works for you. If you wanna turn it out the other way and try it that way, you can do it too. But this is another reason I think why there's not a ton of interfacing on the outside of it because I don't think you could do this if you had all that extra stabilizer on your outside pieces. Okay, so I'm going to turn it right side out so you can see what we have. Okay, so here is the outside of my bag. That's what it looks like with the cute piping, the top stitching. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> and that's the back, all right? So we will move on and we will add the base. Okay, so we are going to add our outside base to our main exterior. So I have it turned uh, inside out and this is the bottom. On the pattern piece, there are center marks. So I transferred those onto my bottom piece here. And then those are gonna be the centers where all of your seams are. On her video and her instructions, she um, has you hand stitch first before you sew, um, which I think is amazing. I didn't have to on the one that I did. It went together really smoothly and stayed in place. But I think if you really have trouble sewing circles and you feel like they never stay where you want them to when you're sewing them, her basting method that she has on her video is awesome and you should definitely try that. Hopefully I don't eat my words and this doesn't work, but um, I feel like if I put enough clips on it, it's great. You could also use staplers or staples. The only thing about staples is they're kind of a pain in the butt because sometimes you sew over them, sometimes they move and it's not fun. So her hand basting method is pretty awesome. So you also need to clip into your exterior just tiny little one eighth to a fourth inch clips along your pieces along the bottom. And that will help ease this circle bottom into place. I definitely suggest doing that. It does help a ton. The way that she has this, these pattern pieces sized, this bottom piece should fit in really nicely. Okay, so now you have all your corners clipped, all your centers, I guess you would say, and now you just want to fit everything else in there. So I start with my centers on everything and go out. Okay, just like that. I'm going to put lots and lots of clips. Okay. 
See how nicely? Like, seriously, it fits in so nice. I'm not really having to struggle too much with it. Okay, so on her instructions right now is where you would take a needle and thread and just baste really big long stitches and baste these edges together if you wanted to. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to sew around this first out at between 1 8 to 1 4 inch seam allowance first to baste this all together. And then I'm going to go in and do the 3 8 inch seam allowance stitch. Um, that's how I'm going to do this. So both methods are great. Stapler, however you need to get this circle to stay in place for you, go for it.
Okay, so that's my first time around the bottom. It looks great. I don't have any puckers. It stays together pretty nicely. Again, if you're worried about it moving, baste it like she does in her video. It's awesome. I think that would be good too. So now I'm going to go around and sew at that 3 8 inch seam allowance, okay? And now it's just all going to stay in place and it'll give that extra, um, I'm actually going to sew from this way for my last step here. There we go. It's going to give it that extra reinforcement. This is probably the easiest circle bottom I have ever sewn together. This one goes together so nicely. It really isn't scary. So if that's what's holding you back from doing a pattern like this, this is the one to try. So now that my bottom is all sewn together, I am going to take some pinking shears and I am going to just cut along the bottom. I am not going to cut into my stitching. I'm gonna cut next to my stitching because I wanna keep both lines of my stitching in there, but this will just make it look better when it's all turned out. I'm going to just turn this out and we'll see what we have real quick. And then we're gonna add our handles and head to the interior of the bag. Oh my gosh, my daughter will love this bag, I think. Now just kind of roll the seam out in between your fingers here. It will look better when the lining is in it as well and it'll help it stay. But look at that. Yeah, when the lining uh, bottom piece with the, the heavy stabilizer is in there, it'll hold that circle better, but it looks pretty dang good. So this is what I have so far. Cute. All right, so let's get to working with the rest of this. I'm gonna move you. So I am going to go ahead and add my handles on the exterior before I move on. I am going to clip, let me move this real quick, just a minute. Okay, I am going to clip my centers here. This will help too when we're putting the whole bag together. All right, so I have my centers clipped and then I am going to mark right with my stuff. Where's my pen? There it is. Okay, so I have my center clipped here. I'm just gonna mark it real there. 
All right, so you wanna go two inches out from your center. Okay, two inches out, and that's gonna be your handle placement, okay? Other side, this is my center here. Two, and two. All right, so you want your handle to go, you want your neat edge, right? And what she means by neat edge is the one that doesn't have the fold on it, okay? With the inside, on the inside of the bag, okay? Right here. So this is my two inch mark. My handle is right next to it on the left. Okay, you wanna take it over, make sure your handle isn't twisted and clip it on this side. And we're just gonna baste that all into place on both sides. Okay. And then we'll head to the inside of the bag. like that. All right, done. So now we can go, oh, that's cute. Ah, it's cute. <laughs> All right, so now we can go to the interior of our bag. I have my interior lining piece. I marked down and center um, measurements in the pattern of where to place my zipper facing. I have my zipper facing here. Um, I'm not interfacing my zipper pieces because this is more of a thicker canvas material, so I don't feel like I need to. I'm going to center that on there. I have drawn the rectangle for my zipper pocket, and I am going to go ahead and sew around that. While I am doing this, I have my iron heating up and I have my heat press heating up, so I can um, iron this zipper facing back and um, fuse the Decaville light to this piece when I'm done. Because again, our heavier stabilizers are going on our interior pieces. So make sure you have those heating up if you need to. There is my zipper. I'm going to cut that open. Do a Y shape, corner in. Just like that. Other side.
Okay, I'm gonna go iron my zipper facing back in. You know, I'm gonna push it through like that. Um, one trick that I have learned that helps with a nice flat facing and turning of your zipper is you wanna press it first like this with your iron and then turn it through and press it. And it just gives it that nice good crease and it helps it. You can also take it and flip it like this and give it a press, flip it like this, give it a press here and here and then turn it and that will help as well. So I'm gonna go do that, I'll be right back. There's my zipper piece all ready. All right, so we're gonna do our pocket next. So go ahead and take your zipper and your pocket pieces. And I want mine opening left to right. So I'm gonna go like this, right sides up. And I'm gonna do an eighth inch, baste it on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press my zipper flat like this, and I'm just gonna top stitch on the inside of my zipper here. I just like how it makes it lay. And look, you don't have to do this part. It's just something I am choosing to do. Just like that. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm doing. All right, and then get your next piece. Face up, face up. And go ahead and do the same thing. Baste that on. And then we'll put it in our lining piece. All right, so one side should be your zipper face up. The other side should be your zipper pocket pieces face up, all right? So you're gonna take this, and I like to put some double-sided tape on the top and the bottom of my zipper here. Just like that. And then I'm gonna add it inside my lining piece. I'm gonna take the bottom off first, one at a time. And just carefully put it on there. Flip it up, I'll take the top off, and then we'll sew around that rectangle. So your zipper tape should be out of the seam allowance where you are sewing this pocket on. All right. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on.
All right, so that is what you should have. We are going to flip that down just like that. And what we need to do is we are going to iron up the edge of this one and we're going to cut this down to match and iron that up and then we're going to sew it with our um, edge folded up because we're pulling our bag through this pocket. So we're leaving the bottom open. So I'm gonna go do that. All right, so that's the back of my pocket. I ironed up the bottom, yep, ironed and folded up the bottom here, about a fourth inch, a little bit more maybe, just like that. And then we're gonna sew up our zipper pocket sides, but not the bottom. Make sure you flip your lining piece out of the way. just like that and you can trim up this zipper facing piece if you want to but it's not going to be in the way of anything so you don't have to and then next you want to put on the little top um, lining piece to finish this off sorry let me clip my centers real quick that one's already clipped okay perfect so we have these top lining pieces and they match our exterior. Um, the There's an angle to it, okay? So the bigger angle side goes towards the top and the smaller towards the bottom. So you wanna take your piece, flip it over. I have my centers clipped on both. I'm just gonna match that up first. And you wanna sew that down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you will do this to both of your lining pieces. And then you want to top stitch. But what you want to do is you want to top stitch each side of the seam. So you want to open up your seam and lay it flat like that, okay? And we are going to stitch down both sides of this, um, stitching the seam flat. So my seam is flat under here. And I'm gonna go down this part first. And I just ran out of bobbin, hold. Okay, let's try that again. I had to get a new bobbin. All right, seam is flat, stitching down both sides. Okay, now I'm gonna come down this other side. Just 
just like that. And there you are. Okay, so my seam is flat. All right, do the same thing to your other lining piece. I already have my top piece clipped on there. Same exact steps. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put my Decaville on the back of these pieces. For this one, what I do is I'm going to slip the pocket through here, okay? You don't want the pocket underneath your stabilizer. So it should fit about like that and it should be out of your seam allowances. I'm gonna go ahead and press that and fuse it and do both pieces and then we'll put the bottom on. So I have my Decaville adhered to the back of my pieces, just like that. And we want to sew together our two lining pieces. We are going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance and sew up the sides. Now this part is meant to be a little bit bigger than this part because you need this to be the same width as your exterior to attach the two, but this needs to be narrower, narrower, <laughs> more narrow, so it can uh, not be saggy inside your exterior. So instead of doing a bigger seam allowance on the lining, she has this top being a little bit bigger. So that's what, that's why it's um, like that. That's the idea for that. So go ahead and you're going to sew this at three eighths and you're doing this top part a little bit bigger and coming in. Okay, like that. Go ahead and repeat. So that's my lining pieces. I am going to, we want these seams to be flat. I am going to take that to my iron and I'm gonna iron these seams flat. I didn't do that on my first bag because I thought, ah, it's fine. But actually, when it's in your exterior and these aren't flat, it kind of like pokes out and um, makes a weird shape. So I think it's important to iron these seams flat. Okay, on both sides and then we'll put on the base. So this base is gonna be put together same way that your exterior was. You have your centers marked, they were on your pattern piece, you transfer them to your um, lining. And I have my centers clipped here and then my seams are my center here. So I am going to clip my centers first just to get those all in place. And then I'm going to do the same exact process that I did for my exterior bottom. And this one lays pretty nicely as well. I don't really have to fight it. It's kind of awesome. It's a little bit, you know, a little different because you have this heavy stabilizer in the bottom of your base here. That's the only difference. This feels like your exterior normally would because it has all this interfacing on it. Now we can clip along here. You could do that before, but I had my centers clipped, so I didn't want to confuse 
my, all my clip marks. Okay, so I'm gonna clip all along and then we will attach it. Okay, so there is the bottom of my bag. It looks super, super slick on the inside. Like it is, I don't know if you can see oh, there. Uh, I mean, like it looks super good on the inside. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I am going to trim the bottom just like I did with the exterior with my pinking shears outside of my stitching. And then we're going to put the two together. I want to turn the lining right side out. Oh, this round bottom looks so good. Look at that. Look how nice that looks other than the wrinkles. But look at that. Looks awesome. Okay. And then you want to turn your exterior inside out. And we are going to put the lining inside of our exterior. Because it is smaller and so it just fits better that way. Make sure that you have your pockets the way you want them. So I want my 
zipper pocket along the back. So I'm lining it up with the back. Make sure your handles are in and your lining zipper pocket is open because you are turning it through that. Okay, so we're putting them together. And now I have my centers clipped here. So I am going to start and just start clipping around. I'm gonna start at my centers here. I think I do. Is that it? That's it. All right. And then you just want to line everything up. You know what? I am going to Flip the centers on my sides here and that'll make it easier for lining this piece up. Right there. Yep, that helped. So definitely clip your side centers as well. Okay. I'm gonna clip this real quick. All right, and then we're going to sew around this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now I am using a pretty big stitch length for this because I don't want my vinyl to be per perforated. Like I don't want it to tear because of the kind of vinyl it is. So I'm using a bigger stitch length on it. Just FYI. Okay, I am gonna go in and do another row of stitching right by my row of stitching that I just did for two reasons. To um, give it extra support so the stitches don't um, pull when I turn it through and to go over my handles one more time and give those a little bit more strength to them as well. 
So I'm going just right next to that seam that I just did, just like I, you know, pretty much how I did the bottoms because I did two rows of stitching on the bottoms as well. Same idea. I like to do this on most of my bags now. I feel like it really helps if you ever have that issues, those issues. to do the pinking shears again. Oh, I just threw my scissors away. <laughs> I'm gonna do the pinking shears again and then we'll turn the bag out. We are almost done. I am not going to do the pinking shears around where my handles are, but I'll do it everywhere else. Let's do this. All right, here we go. the cutest bag style you've ever seen. Look at that. Okay, so all we have left to do is close up the pocket and top stitch our um, top of the bag and then we're finished, so let's do that. All right, I'm closing up the pocket here. have it all clipped together and we're just gonna close that up and then we'll top stitch the top. Okay, put that back in. And now I am just going to top stitch, which I've kind of already rolled it out pretty good here. Yeah, okay. And here we go. Now, if you want to turn this inside out and top stitch from the inner circle, if you understand what I mean by that, go for it. I've heard people really like doing that as well. I haven't tried yet, but I will on one of these bags someday. This one's not too bad just to do like this though. I do want to make sure my walking foot doesn't rip my vinyl there when I'm changing um, from the 
from materials. One of the most important things you can learn about a walking foot is that it rips your vinyl with big thick seams. So make sure you always protect your vinyl with your walking foot. This is such a domestic friendly pattern as well. There are really no thick seams. Even going over my handles is super easy. Like it's not thick at all. Very domestic machine friendly. our Kaljan bag. Look how adorable that is. Oh my gosh. I love this bag so much. Aren't these the perfect Easter baskets? My kids, well, I don't know if they'll love them as much as me, but I think they're pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> and this was a great easy sew. I don't feel like any of it was super difficult. If you've been scared of round bottoms, this is a great bag to work on and to practice on. It goes together so nicely. Anyways, that's our bag. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Leave any comments for me. I'd love to hear what you have to say, um, answer any questions that you may have, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.